It is funny when you get, this is just a tangent, but when you get to hold an iconic instrument, yeah, if it you've is. had that experience, I'm sure you have, where it's, it's, uh, you know, a famous guitar that you I, get to hold on to. I don't know if I actually have, but my, my friends, we did a song with Willie, and um, before he got to the studio, his his tech asked uh, a friend of mine to tune it or to hold it and play it while they while they did the sound, and yeah. my, my friend was pretty excited <laughs> to play Trigger. <laughs> I would imagine, yeah, that would be pretty freaky. I think uh, I've seen. Just over the years, well, through Danny Harrison, uh, I was in England and went by his house, which was his dad's house, obviously. And he he uh, let me, he showed me, and he's acting like it. Oh, you know, do you want to hold the 1963 Gretsch Duo Jet that my dad played in the Cavern? Oh wow! And I was thinking I shouldn't touch it. It's like I will defile it. And then you realize it's a guitar. Yeah. And um, it needs to be played. It, it wants to be played. It wants to be. Well, actually, the guitar did see me and say, "No, not him." <laughs> not him. <laughs> First I'm time Robin Knox. That's so funny. <laughs> actually, you're reminding me. I have played a very famous piano, at, and I got to go to Friar Park, and yeah. met George. Harrison and Danny was there and Olivia. When I first reconnected with my dad, actually, I was You're kidding. I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. We finally reconnected and we, we got very close over the years after that. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a, a great thing. And I remember I landed in London to go visit them for the first time in a long time. And they're like, we're going to George's house for dinner. So just take a nap, clean up. I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't know we were going to George Harrison's house. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Who is this George kinda, anyway? <laughs> I was kind of oblivious, you know, I was jet lagged and young and we get there and he he was so sweet. Yeah. And he was so happy to see me and my dad reconnect as well. And um, and he idolized your dad. He I did. Mean, clearly it was, your dad changed of his course. life. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was kind of a crazy night and I was half, half jet lagged through the whole thing, but he um he asked me to play for him because my dad told him that I was this piano player and I was like okay cuz I just was like you know I knew who he was at that point of course you but. played for George Harrison <laughs> so I wow. I sat down at this piano which now I know I didn't at the time but I think it was one of John Lennon's pianos yes and so. I've seen it cuz <sighs> it, it when I was there I think they moved it to it. This was in a different. It's not in the house when I saw it. It's there's this other place where they shot all the interviews for the anthology, and it's got this hand painting yes, on it. Yes, it's got painting on like it, like a rainbow it's and beautiful. sort of psychedelic stuff. Yeah, yes. so I didn't know this at the time, and I was kind of just oblivious to the whole meaning of the moment. But I sat down and I played an old Hoagy Carmichael song called oh. "The Nearness of You for Joy," wow. and he was so sweet, and he, it was just a very funny moment that I just now remembered. And he, he like, I'm sure he loved it. Yeah, I mean, he was kind about it. <laughs> I don't know. He, <laughs> if he hated it, he, he, he pretended he loved it. <laughs> he was, you are Nora Jones, you I know. know but I, I was 18, it's not, it's you not, know? I know, but if I had come in at 18 and played a song on the piano for, for George Harrison, it would have gone very differently. Yeah. Well, I sang it too. Clang, clang, yeah, clang, exactly. clang. Uh, <laughs> so that, that was kind of a With funny, the trolley. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Luckily, I, I didn't know the instrument was so historic. Yeah, it's good not to know those things I think sometimes. so. It's better to just be oblivious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm kind of intrigued that when you first started out, before you had all your success, you were a lounge singer. You <laughs> yeah, know? And kinda. I and I've and and for just a little bit, you were a lounge singer and I'm thinking um, you know, let's say things hadn't blown up for you. Do you do you think you could have like made your peace with being a lounge singer for a long time or is that a tough gig? I mean, it's something you don't really know, mm -hmm. right? You can't go back. It, I, I I, wouldn't, yeah, I kind of was a lounge singer, but it was really more like a restaurant than a lounge. So you're playing for people while they're eating. Yeah, and, and usually they wouldn't clap and nobody heard, but the gig was actually to just play piano. But mm -hmm. since I sang, I asked if I could bring a little little amp and and sing like every five songs or something and it was actually the best practice i ever had this is in college in dallas and um i i basically learned how to sing and play at the same time because it's kind of a coordination thing sure yeah. yeah so it was it was great practice and every once in a while the whole restaurant like one person would just start clapping and then slowly the whole restaurant would start clapping <sighs> But then usually they weren't they weren't clapping at all. I um, <laughs> oh, man. I will tell you that first of all the the thing I hate 
the most in comedy is when you have to perform for people who are eating. Yeah, it's uh, horrible. <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter what stage you get to, there's, there are benefits. Yeah. Where you, they say, okay, go on up and you have your jokes and you have your riffs that you want to do and you get up on stage and you hear the distinct sound of, of, of silverware hitting each you know, clanking Which is a together, sound. and then, and and then <laughs> chewing. And, and people chewing. And I remember being at the uh, there's a big ballroom at the Waldorf Astoria, and I had to do benefits there a million times when I was in New York, and being up there, and the crowd doesn't even know. Just a voice of God goes, "Ladies and gentlemen, Conan O'Brien," and and <laughs> people are just getting there like plates are being put down and served and people are saying, no, 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 I said red, not white. <laughs> yeah. And I walked up stage and there wasn't even any sense that I was on stage. Yeah. And I go, well, well, anyway, and I start to get into my thing and a man was sitting right in the front row. Oh, just sawing. And his back was to <laughs> me and he was cutting into his meat and he put it in his mouth and he's chewing and then he whipped his head around <laughs> to look at who's this annoying person at the podium behind me. And I just saw a chewing, unhappy face looking yeah, up at me. That's not great. And I thought, fuck this. This is, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to perform for people eating. You can have like a no eating clause. Oh. Did you I know actually, that? yeah. I yeah. know. Like, you, you need, you need you more pull benefit, in the industry. You, <laughs> yeah. you can say, like, I'll do it, but not when they're eating. When they're eating. Directly before dinner or after the plates have been cleared. But I will tell you this, Nora. I am a person who, if I'm anywhere, if I'm in a bar or a restaurant, and someone's playing when they finish the song, I applaud, yeah. I don't care. And sometimes it's awkward because I get self-conscious because if you're the, if I start applauding and no one else does, I think I'm making the situation worse. And yeah, especially if no one else clapping. does. Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. And also you're drawing attention to yourself. Well, I love that part. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you liked that or, or what. Oh, no. You, I, I go out. That's I, actually I, why I go you do out it. in a t-shirt that says, I am Conan O'Brien. Yeah. And then parentheses, it explains who that is. You yeah. start clapping in the middle of the song. Yeah. 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 Just and, so like, people look people, at you. and I say, you know. Conan likey. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, yeah, many times when you've been on the show, I'd be, I'd clap midway. Conan's happy. <laughs> get a camera on me. I just want to get a cockaroo while we're here. A cockaroo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. I can die now. <laughs> I just want to get a cockaroo yeah. while I'm here. That's what she said. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I've been getting that all my life. Uh, 